So if we can kind of get around Google+, Plus, we kind of know the screens a bit and the concept. It's still about posting and getting followers and searching for audience. The big drawing point of Google+, Plus are collections and communities. I'm going to say really, however, really focus on communities. Let me look at collections a little bit, and then we'll focus most on communities. If we go to collections, it's suggesting these various collections. Nina Trankova has Google Plus Connect. You can click to view a collection. Don't click follow yet, but click on any collections icon to view it. And what this is, again, is just Nina herself posting a variety of things on this topic. Universal Language Google Plus Create Initiatives, 5th Anniversary Global Event Photo Walks. This is what she's posting about here. She created it, only she can post to it. But it seems to be interesting enough because 26,000 people are following it. So 26,000 people have chosen to pay attention to the content of this collection. You can follow Nina herself and see everything she posts, but she pretty wisely seems to be or organizing her content into collections, into concepts. I only care about this concept, so I can follow only this. And I can preview what she's posted here before I click follow. I can go to her profile by clicking her icon and see what other collections she may have. She's got her business guide, her Go Local Online, <coughs> Google Plus Synergize. Well, what's this business guide? I could click to preview it. She's posting things about business, 6,000 followers. Not as many followers, but still 6,000 followers is nothing to sneeze at. Two days ago she posted that. Three days ago she posted this. She seems to be posting a lot of great business things. There's going to be lots of talented, interesting people on Google+. If you're interested in Nina, search Nina Trankova. I don't know who she is. I just saw her right now. She seems to have interesting things. But you can find her and follow her full account to see everything, even the funny cat pictures you don't want to see. Or you can follow just the collection where she's targeting her content. For yourself, think about that as well. I'm Victor's Bakery, fictional Victor's Bakery. And I want to share pictures about all the things we sell. Well, we sell cookies, we sell cupcakes, we sell um, pastries and baguettes or whatever. We sell different things. I could think about creating collections on those various topics. So the people that are most interested in cakes could follow only cakes and not pay attention to cookies. Go on collections, you see featured, you see who you are following collections, and you see yours. You see a spot for you to create a collection. I'm going to say don't focus that much on collections. Yes, as soon as you log into Google+, you see all of these collections, but I think the the downside of the collections is that it misses the interactive part. It misses the social in social media. This is one-way communication. I'm posting things all about County Durham wildlife, bird photography, Rajkot. But no one really is also <coughs> actively sort of communicating back and forth. That's not the purpose of a collection. I would say focus more of your efforts and your time, since it's so limited, on communities. Explore collections as you wish, but focus on communities. That's the big secret on Google+. Anecdotally, I can tell you when we do this for clients, we're on all the networks for them, but I often see Google+, Plus works really fast when you deal with communities. Twitter can be kind of a long process to get followers. Facebook there's secrets there too that we'll talk about next week, but Google Plus communities are the ones that really seem to work really well because here are people congregating around a topic. Maybe these topics are not interested, and I'm not are not anything that I'm interested about or not about my business. It just happened randomly. Food bloggers. My business is about food. 224,000 people that could potentially care about my food business. <laughs> These have a join, or perhaps an ask to join, 
before you join, you can click the community and see that Major posted this, Lisa posted that, me posted that, Scott posted this, uh, Prangya's Kitchen posted that, everyone's being active and posting things. The point of this is they are reaching an audience of 24,000 right off the bat. You could reach 24,000 people right off the bat. I have zero followers. If I post into this community, right away I reach 24,000. That's the big secret. That's the reason why you want communities. People are congregating around a topic. Find the topic, a community of your business. Reach them directly with even zero followers. <coughs> That's great. I want to post. How do I post? Well, you have to join first. Now I have the button to post into the community. That wasn't there a moment ago. Now that I've joined, I can post, and 24,000 people could see my post. Question? You did say it was, I guess, to avoid creating your own community, mm -hmm. but to follow a community, mm -hmm. to interact as best. Join a community, yes. Yes. Um, follow, uh, creating a community, again, not so good. I'll get back to that in a moment. You want to join communities. Once you join a community, then you have the ability to post. Now I'm going to post right here, sale this Saturday, cupcakes, blah, blah, blah. I can reach 24,000 people. It's that easy and not that easy. There's nuances here, but the big idea here, to get to use Google Plus like a power user. Use Google Plus like a power user. Search communities. about your business. So topics, keywords. Join communities about your business. Share to communities about your business. Caveats. Beware. Things to be aware of. I just said, okay, I'm going to join that blogger, food bloggers community. I'm going, to, I'm going to say sale this Saturday, use this coupon. The caveats are read and follow the rules of the community. Communities are like the classic bulletin boards where people congregate on a topic and someone is in charge. Someone is keeping everyone in line. I may get the idea to just start to follow, 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 <coughs> and post to all of them, but I probably will run afoul of the rules of the community. The rules of the community vary per community. Somewhere, maybe as the very first post, or maybe on the side over here under about, somewhere there are going to be rules of the community. I'm going to look here under about. Let's see what, if I open that up. Please be an active member. Like and comment on other posts. This group is for all lovely people that have their own food blog or love to cook and bake and need some new recipes. Be sure to organize your posts into the right category. Invite your friends. Thank you. This one's pretty open. Some will say, only post one thing per day. If you posted seven things, you're breaking a rule. Some things might say, only post your own original things. If you don't do that, you may be breaking a rule. Some may say, don't put any self-promotion. If you do that, you're breaking a rule. Well, the consequences of breaking the rules depend on the community, because these communities are made by regular people, not Google. Google has no say or control over these except for the limits of the terms of service, which is about like no hacking and no violence and no, you know, harassment and that sort of thing that we're all following. But as long as those rules are being followed, the people that created these communities can <clears throat> run the community how they wish. This is regular people not affiliated with Google, not hired by Google. I can create my own community, as I said. Yours, I'll create a community right now. Everyone that loves cookies, join my community. Again, don't create a community. We'll see why in a moment. 
but instead join communities that exist, but follow the rules. Read the rules, follow the rules. <clears throat> Consequences of not following the rules. Your post may be removed. So I posted that coupon. One of the moderators thought, and there could be more than one, they thought, well, they're breaking the rule. We're going to remove that post. That's the best case scenario that your post is removed. Worst case scenario, you are removed from the community. And I lost access to 24,000 potential people looking at my items. So if it says post only once per day, and you saw that and disregarded it, and if the moderator is awake and sees it, they post it twice. Best case scenario, they remove your second post. They may then send you a private message and say, please read the community, you're, you're new, please read the rules. And then, or they may just be right away, because they've dealt with so much spam of all, spam of, all of these years, remove you right away, no questions asked. And because regular people create these communities and they're not Google employees, you have no recourse, oftentimes, to get you back into the community. You can't go cry over to Google and say, they kicked me out of their playground, let me back in. I've done it. It doesn't work. I've been kicked out of a community. And I went straight to the Google Plus official community and told them, I followed the rules, here's screenshots, here's what I did, this person is a jerk. And they said, it's their community, they run it as their wish. They're not breaking any main rules, they can run it as a tyrant and that's it. We can't put you back into their community. So follow the rules. I would recommend everyone, under Communities, search Google+. We'll find here the official Google Plus community. Collections, Communities. Google Plus Help. This is the official, this is one of the very few official <coughs> communities from Google Plus where you can talk to real Google Plus employees. And I did. You know, a couple of years ago, I was part of a photography community. And I was sharing the photos and I thought I was on topic, but I kept seeing my photos kept getting removed. People liked my photos, but my photos kept getting removed. Eventually then I suddenly realized I'm not in the community anymore and I can't click join anymore. So I went to this community, Google Help, I showed them screenshots of the rules, I showed them screenshots of my photos, and I said, I was removed. And they said, sorry. They run their community how they want, they're not violating the terms, can't get back into it. I found another community similar, with a few less people, but still the topic, and I moved on. Don't fall into my, my situation. Read the rules, follow the rules, browse the community a bit to get a flavor of it. The old term for it was lurking. Lurk in the community a bit to get a flavor for it to see if you're going to like it, if it's going to be useful to you. Don't just click join to everything. Join these communities. Use them to your advantage. When you join a community, all of the stuff getting posted there will show up on your home screen. So if you follow 40 communities, you're going to have a lot of things on your home screen. You may or may not care. Use the community self selfishly. Not selflessly. Selfishly. It's okay, but follow the rules. I'm going to search cookies. I'm going to see communities more. Here are all of these communities on the topics of cooking and baking, which is what my business is about. I could click join, 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 join to all of them. I'm going to reach 85,000 here, 100,000 here, 24,000 here. But I'm going to read the rules. I'm going to go check out the baking community first by clicking its link. A community for everyone who enjoys the sweeter side of life come and connect and discuss baking related topics and tips. That one's pretty open also. I have seen some communities that are very strict. Let's see if I can find one where it says do this and don't do that. Please read this. So there's a message there. Please be active. Please only upload images that you own and only share recipes that you have created. All others will be deleted. No giveaways please. So no contests. G plus sweets. Everyone's got their own community, their own rules. 
here's some rules. Place posts in the appropriate category. Communities are also made up of categories depending on who invented them. There's categories here of select the dessert, of discussion, community suggestion. So this one is saying, whatever you post, when you post, put it into the right section. What else? Share no more than one link from your website a day unless you are participating in the special hashtag events. Then you may share an additional link for the event. Make sure to set up post appropriately for participation. Okay, so they're saying once per day. Do not merely drop a link, include a description of what it is that inspired... Do not merely drop a link. Also, include a description of what it is, what inspires you, why you love it. Provide a link to the recipe or original content. Please add the community hashtag. Do not post and run. We, will, we all enjoy receiving plus ones, comments, and shares. Do the same to others. How do they know? Well, you know, when someone creates a community and they like this topic, they want to mold it and make it be good, they may ha there may be more than one moderator, and I'll take the nine to, nine to one shift, and you take the one to five shift, and you do this other time. Whoever created this community, a person or a company, has chosen to run this how they want, and they're saying, you know, don't just post stuff here and take self uh, take uh, selfishly from it uh, contribute now I just said use it selfishly yes but follow the community rules too don't share your posts with multiple communities at the same time so if you share that picture to seven communities they don't like that so they're gonna remove it from their community then they're not special anymore they're saying well, why did you share the same thing on ten communities share it only with us we're the best ones How did they know that? Again, someone has a lot of free time. <laughs> They're going to go in and... It depends how people share it, because you can copy and share your own picture to more than one place, and it will say, originally found at whatever. Oh, the smarter way is for you to manually share it. But again, if someone has time, and a person, a moderator here, may be following this baking community and that baking community and another's, they may then see, why did this show up seven times? Oh, this person posted it seven times. So the good and the bad about communities, the great about it is you can quickly reach a big audience. I have zero followers, but if I, write, if I find the right community, I, I right away start to tap into a big audience. Share to communities. Read the rules. There are consequences. Follow or join communities. with at least 1,000 members. As you search, you'll see lots of communities with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of members, and some with 70, 500, 2,099. You'll see lots of different communities. Everyone wants to make a community because everyone's gonna, everyone thinks, I'm going to be the best community of all. But there's already seven other you know, uh, astronomy communities. So with a critical mass, with a gene pool of at least a thousand members, I think that's the minimum that you want for there to be positive activity, possible customers, interactions. If I'm seeing one of the 800, maybe close enough. But more members, the better. But the opposite is also true. Be careful about million plus communities. There's a couple communities that have reached the million member mark. The problem with those, there's so many people there posting so many things, you're gonna get drowned out. You post something and then suddenly there's 10 new things uh, when you're about to log out. Your content may be lost. I definitely, myself and for my clients, follow the minimum, but sometimes I break the maximum. Sometimes I do follow the million member communities and I know that the fame there or activity there will be fleeting because there's so much new stuff, but I could get a little bit of activity and interaction and follows and such briefly for like an hour and then suddenly there's new things. Maybe that's fine. <clears throat> if there's 
not a decent sized community kind of weird topic of interest, then does it make sense to create one? No, because the problem still with creating your own communities is that now you need to build an audience. Not only are you trying to get followers for your business and sell products or whatever, but now you have to be a gatekeeper and you have to build an audience and keep out the spam and deal with negative comments and keep everyone on track and be a bouncer, be a, uh, be a cop, be someone in charge. I don't have that time. No payoff, possibly join communities that exist. If they're too small, think one step outside your topic. If I don't find enough that are about cupcakes, I'll search simply for cooking or baking. Try to think of a larger topic if your topic is too narrow. You might find some that are close enough that you can join. Yes? And what if it has only 500,000? That's good. That's good. 500,000. Is a, is a lot of people, it's good, but not so much as a million or two million. I'd, I'd go for that, sure. Usually the ones that I try to personally uh, go for are between the 10,000 you know, to 500,000. It's a big range there. But the 1,000s to the 2,000s, I think even though those are still a bit small, up to these levels are good. Higher than these levels are sort of too big, perhaps. Although re being really big there is not that bad, but being too small is. There's no critical mass. There's not enough sure. people really interested. So somewhere around there. Good range of size. Caveats lurk for a bit to get the flavor of the community before sharing, before contributing. <coughs> Browse the community before joining to confirm its value. I may see a community of 27,000 that fits my bill. It's about the topic. I may click join. The problem could be, depending on the community rules and moderators, it may be a community overrun with spam. It may be a dead community with a lot of followers but no good activity. You don't know that until you actually click to view. So recipes and desserts, 24,000 members. What I'm getting at is before I join, I go here and I check a few things out. I try to see, are the same people or businesses posting over and over and over? I want to see if there's some variety. I see Nora, I see Flavor Quotient. I see Adita, I see Manami. I see Chili Pepper Madness, I see something I can't pronounce, I see Swati, I see Manju, Chili Pepper Madness, okay, there's two Chili Pepper Madness posts, two days ago, and one six hours ago. Uh, that's not so bad, but there are communities where the same are posting over and over and over and over, lowering the quality of the community. What I'm also checking for is the activity. Over on Twitter, we saw, the, we saw the stats below a tweet. We see stats below a post on Google+. The plus one, which is Google Plus's version of a like, this has got five likes. It has one share. This was forwarded to more people, one other person. No comments. When there are comments, you'll see the little comment icon, and you'll see the words below, like here. Daryl said, looks great. He's got seven plus ones, one share, one comment. Um, so this person is sharing a couple of things pretty often, but no replies really. People are not paying attention to them. Here's another from Swati. Uh, four, no comments. So this takes some effort. There's another one from that person. But no comments again. There's a lot of people in this community, but maybe it's not as active as it appears to be simply by that number. The same people, perhaps there's Chili Pepper Madness again. The same people are posting perhaps a lot, and there's not much activity below a post. That's an indicator that it might not be a high quality community, even though it simply has the numbers. So it does take that effort to vet the community 
but it could be very valuable. I'll try that again. Oops. Cookies. I'll go to some other one. Cakes and Bakes. If I go to that one, it's got 85,000. Holly, the owner, posted her message right at the top here. She started it with 2,000 members, and now there's 30,000. Well, now there's 85,000. So Habeshek posted this 23 plus ones one day ago. Nums the Word posted this 19 hours ago, 7 plus ones. Marta posted this 5 hours ago, 2 plus ones. So different people, Daniela, Isabella, Erica, Angela, Rita, Aaron, Ambi comment. So Aaron posted this and people are, are replying there. I love a guy who cooks. So people are active there. This community seems to be higher quality, not just because it's got higher numbers, but people seem to be more active. Because I want when I post plus ones. I want shares. I want comments. Ultimately I want follows. I want sales. Browse the community a bit to confirm its value, which is, does it have a variety of people? <coughs> Are they interacting? If those two are not yes, it may not be a good idea to join a community. You can, of course, unjoin. I joined Cakes and Bakes. I'm a member. I can easily unjoin it. I can leave it. Yes? You may be coming into communities that don't have a lot of rules. That's good and bad then. It's good because then you can kind of do what you want. It's bad because then other people can do what they want. <laughs> Spammers can do what they want. Okay. So but if I'm you're looking in the right spot. I think so. Usually they're under about. Okay. Sometimes, however, they are the very first post. Try to look at the very top. Sometimes the the very first post is pinned there, like this okay. one, and there may be rules pinned there. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if I join this community, I want to take advantage. 85,000 members here. I read the rules, and I'm not going to put spam. I'm going to follow the rules, etc. I can click the pencil to actually post to that community. It says here now, you're about to post to that community. Not public, but to this community. Anyone else publicly could see your post. Uh, just because it doesn't say public doesn't mean no one will see it except this community. It's being targeted, it's being most sent to that community, yes, but anyone that follows you could still see this community content. It's just that you're focusing on this cohort of people that might be more valuable to you. And I can tell you, definitely, anecdotally, I've used Google Plus since day one um, when they made it public. I didn't get into the chance to get into it during beta testing, even though I got an invite, but I said, I'm already on Twitter, why would I try another network? I should have gotten onto it just to have bragging rights that I was on Google Plus before everyone was. But I got onto it like on the first week it opened to the public, and I've been using it, and I really like it. And personally, Google Plus is my favorite social network of all of them. Personally, I'm on it all the time. I get so much great activity. I've got like now 5 million views on on um, on Google Plus uh, over on, you know, I've got several thousand followers. Over on Twitter, I've had Twitter since 2009 and I'm less than a thousand followers. Some people have, you know, 100,000 followers. But I've got 5 million views here on Google Plus and I've been using it less than Twitter. And for businesses, it also works really well. Again, I can post something for a client on all the main networks and oftentimes if I choose the right community for the client, often that gives us much better results. So find communities, join communities, share to them, post into the right section of the community, follow the rules, be active, mm -hmm. be social in the social network. Yes? So 
that one is also seems to skew young. Yeah, But it, that's, that's really changing. Um, I really hesitate on that one, Twitter, Young, but really everyone. Everyone. You know, this school is on Twitter, the city of San Diego is on Twitter, businesses are on Twitter, heads of state are on Twitter. So it's kind of everyone, but the culture of it seems to skew young. Most of these are rather young, all advertising is young, whatever that is, but still, because of communities, of Google Plus is how you'll find your demographics. Communities are also valuable for you to start building your audience in a way like we did with Twitter via search. I see Nums the Word, or I see Abhishek here, or Holly, and I can click on any one of their profile or hover over their profile and then click follow. The problem, of course, with following any account is that you will see all of the content that they post. And maybe Holly is not just about baked goods. Maybe it's also, she's also about other things that I wouldn't care about or actually don't like. So the danger always of following an account without really checking what they're posting is you may get things on your home timeline that you don't care about, that you don't want to see. It's safer to follow a community about a topic. There is some value to them going in and click follow to Erica, click follow to Angela, click follow to Aaron, but the follow will then expose you to everything that they're posting, which may not be everything you want to see. So that's the big secret on Google Plus communities. You don't want to create your own because it's too much trouble building a community nurturing it and keeping it on track and keeping out the spam and all of that. Some communities you may have seen are, say, ask to join. Well, those are exclusive communities. Those are communities that someone will check out your profile before letting you come in. That's why I had said you want your profile fully set up you want three to five posts. Someone from one of these communities, the G plus baking community, that's barely cracking 2,000. But the, those that are here have been chosen by whoever the moderators are to show that they are high quality accounts. And with a low number of people, this may be a good uh, community for me to get into. But if I click ask to join, at the moment, they'll reject me. I don't have my logo, I don't have any about information, I haven't really posted anything meaningful, they're not going to let me in. What was that all saying? I wouldn't want to be part of a member of any club that would have me as a member of their club. So, G plus speaking community, let's see any about info. <laughs> If you love bake, if you love to bake homemade goodies, you are in the right place. This baking community is for us passionate bakers that love to tempt with our treats. Will what will we do here? Talk baking. Our goal is to keep the community informational and not just promotional. Post in the appropriate category. Post up to two times per day. When posting, please use the hashtag #gbaking. After posting, please spend time in the community. Plus oneing, you know, being active, commenting. Yes. And so they use the hashtags so that they will show up on Twitter as well? No, each network can use hashtags, but then each network is closed. So hashtags would be visible in Google+. So if I do hashtag search gbaking, let's check out what other people are using there. So Laura posted this, Serena, Urvashi. So these are the hashtags that are being used in Google Plus. It's not showing or going to Twitter, but every network often has their own search hashtags, and you find the content in the network. 
but they may be. This uh, Google Plus Baking community may also be active on Twitter, and they use the same hashtag over on Twitter. I would have to log into Twitter, search that hashtag, and then I'll find the content on Twitter with that hashtag. So they're kind of probably using their hashtag in multiple networks to keep all of those together. If you go to the right network, you'll find the right content. We're going to wind down, have a little bit of lab time, and remember there's a class right after us, but I'll take general questions about what we talked about today. Any general questions? Yes? Just uh, the frequency of posting for the three different categories in your... The three different networks? No, no, no. You said beginner, you said you Oh, okay. Yes, what so... So frequency in posting to any network. Here we have also beginner once per week. Any network once per week, any day of the week, advanced, every day. Actually, multiple times times every day. That's the advanced one. That's a very hard as well. So in the intermediate, every day. Lots of work. Lots of new content to think up and be active with. Perfectly fine to be at the beginner and always stay there. That's perfectly fine because the alternative of bad is nothing. I do it a little bit and I forget about it. Yes? If Google Plus works for you, um, What's the rationale to be on all the different sites? The rationale to be on the different sites mostly is in the beginning, when you're figuring out which one should I be on. Okay. Once you figure it out, I, I'm a superstar on Google+, I don't need Facebook. Don't, don't do it. You're getting your audience on Google+, and you're saving your time and effort. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, it's very valuable to first figure out where should I be at. So I'm going to say for most of us, this, this class has no homework. This class has no assignments, whatever. If this was a class where I was doing this for an assignment, we have an assignment there where I have everyone post something new every day for seven days straight. Glad you, be glad you're not in that class. But for us, I would recommend you use it once per week. Try to post something new to this network, to every network. Something new every week. You can do go back what I said over here, and you've got the... Uh, intermediate level where, okay, I'm going to do something every week, but I'm going to use the same picture, different text on all the networks. I will share something on Monday on Twitter, something on Tuesday on Google+, something on Wednesday on Facebook, and then I'm done for the week. Or I can do it all on Friday, or I could do it all on Saturday, or I can schedule it or whatever. Um, Google+, Plus doesn't have scheduling built in, but I will mention a scheduling app later once we then also talk about Facebook. Yes? When we set up the profile originally, we decided not to put an address in there. Mm -hmm. Later we want to create that as a street address, and where's the way to go back up there and put that address in or do you have to start over? I think you can fix that somewhere in the settings. Try browsing your settings. There's various screens under settings or maybe up on the top right manage account somewhere there. I believe there is a way to con to add that, to convert it. Worst case scenario, you create a new one. Or uh, there's also the help, over on help, we have a, a, a way somewhere here to, to connect, to ask Google for, for the help, help forum as well. On my notes, I said uh, to remind me about this, I just remembered We'll do it next time because we have uh, Google Plus reviews. We also have uh, Facebook reviews. I'll cover it with Facebook. Uh, but basically what, what these reviews are, why they're valuable, and all of that. It, it's also applicable in Facebook. So we'll talk about it during Facebook because we need more time for that. How do we get these notes? I'm going to save these notes in the network folder in just a moment. Okay. Um, so... That's it for the moment. I'm going to upload the video. Remember, send me an email requesting the videos. I'll put the notes in the folder in just a moment, and I'll remind everyone where that's at. I'll turn on the printer. We need to wrap it up by 12.55 to let the next class in, please.